Hello, people of the internet. It's your boy, Skinny Penis. Trying to keep the hot streak alive for as long as humanly possible. Um, at this point, it's uh, it's a dedicated goal for me to do as many videos <coughs> in a row as possible. Let's see where we end up. And we have now received the request to play Marseille. Which also makes sense, because I really want to essentially show it off myself, because it's a very interesting new ship. Uh, probably one of the more interesting additions to the game in, in recent history, also in terms of it being really balanced. Uh, having clear strengths, clear weaknesses, uh, and overall being a great addition to the game. So, what are the strengths uh, of Marseille? It's essentially one of the fastest cruisers, especially for the size and the guns. You have 41 knots with speed boost. Theoretically you could spec out numbered and go even faster. Uh, or you have the special captain that procs with potential damage. But uh, base speed of uh, 41 knots essentially, because if you run speed boost module you're most likely going to have it uh, available most of the times. So your strength is to get fast into flanks and synergize that speed together with your pretty hard hitting uh, guns that also have the option of uh, you also have the option of uh, pulling a reload booster in the right situations so it has pretty pretty strong uh, AP it's essentially comparable to Stalingrad in terms of AP performance the only thing you're lacking is improved penetration angles which is a slight drawback because you have to position even better because you can't abuse slight angling mistakes of the enemy. Uh, it has basically very low HE DPM but that gets countered by the fact that you do have the reload booster which means you get additional salvos when DCPs are down so you essentially you get the option of setting fires at the right times which is uh, probably even stronger than having just high fires per minute overall and your HE obviously has high pen. Uh, your HE is, I think, over 50 pen. Yeah, it's 55 pens. For example, even German deck armor you can penetrate. Um, okay, now for this game, we have tier 8 matchmaking. We have a submarine again, because submarines are out in full force. And we have a carrier that really, really, really seems to enjoy hopping onto my cock and uh, fapping ferociously out of range. You actually have a high uh, high base range on Marseille, I mean 19.6 base range. That's incredible for a cruiser, but it goes to show it's essentially like a comparable cruiser in terms of how did that actually hit when he was outside of range without lock-on? Doesn't make sense. That is interesting wargaming coding to be honest. Um, yeah, but the the range and the guns are comparable to other heavy cruisers like Stalingrad, uh, what else is there? Probably like Alaska, Puerto Rico. High range, uh, lower reload, but better caliber than the normal cruisers you have with the 203s or even uh, light cruisers with smaller gun caliber, like 150 millimeters and stuff. Um, yeah, so I'm trying to go into the flank here fast. Sadly, I got a mid spawn on this kind of map where it's diagonal caps. It's very nice to have a flank spawn in these kind of speedy boats as you could have guessed if I would have spawned more towards A I would have been way faster into the flank than any other ship giving you great opportunities coupled with your decent concealment it's not the best concealment but 11.6 on such a heavy cruiser is pretty good so coupled with the speed and your decent conceal you're able to catch a lot of people in randoms off guard and get onto their broadside which is basically the strength of the ship having the additional AP volley or the additional HE volley at the right time while also having the speed and the concealment to abuse that allows you to essentially work around great game knowledge and a good game understanding in terms of positioning is being rewarded on the ship in a very 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 interesting way I have hydro popped I have my reload boost popped as you can see you get your base reload is super bad but because you have the reload booster you can pop additional damage at the right time when someone makes a mistake 
We have the submarine on our right, we have the Morsu to our left. Thankfully, every single battleship in the enemy team decided to go into the same square for some reason. My speed boost is down now, which greatly limits my maneuverability in this scenario. The submarine is spotting me. Thinking about blind dropping him. As the carrier again is on my deck, that's definitely someone who's running like matchmaking monitor or something. Uh, it's like really fucking funny what he's doing. Yeah, well, I wish him the best for the future and his endeavors in life. He seems to be a really nice person that I would like to go to, to a party with, that I would like to go out drinking with, have a nice little talk. Definitely great personality there. The Emmelman. Uh, just epic. I actually lost all my HP to the carrier. The Marceau decided to go close to the rock. The submarine thankfully turns away now. The Marceau went close to the rock, so I'm kinda trying to bait him to run away and get into my hard line. I mean, yeah, okay. The, the carrier focus is a disaster. My regal booster is back uh, and available, which means if I could go for the Marceau right now, because even if I don't kill him with the first salvo, I'm getting a very fast second shot. The guy is exactly doing what I expected. At some point he has to leave. There you go. You don't really finish him off immediately. So you gotta pop the reload booster for that. Don't really want to fuck around too long here. I'm gonna lie. And we got the free kill. I'm going to DCP the fire at this point because I'm now that my speed boost is also back, the battleships are still running away. Um, but I, I wanted to clear that corner first, uh, so there is no additional torpedo threat uh, to the carrier. Because this carrier is going to keep hopping onto my dick for the eternity of this game now, because I'm completely alone in the flank. But I really wanted to make sure that we win that flank, uh, in the sense that there is no more ship here. He's going to flood me here probably, huh? No, okay. I really wanted to make sure that we win that flank, that we don't lose A again, or in any any situation here uh, that I can now fully concentrate on either playing towards the middle or into their carrier. Problem here is that the submarine is actually on the surface. Let's try to blind drop him since we, I mean, it's for free. Just use him anyways. Nothing bad is gonna come of it. Um, as long as my speed boost is ready I can keep hunting or going towards Izumo and Immelman since I have a great ability or like I have really good real good odds of dodging it. Um it's it's a French speed boost, it's not a normal cruiser speed boost, a twenty percent one. Uh definitely definitely more usable in terms of uh dodging capabilities than other speed boosts just because you get away more speed as you can see. It's pretty hard for these people to make out where I'm going to go. Um, and how to hit me. This carrier is a remarkable human being. As said, like, I would definitely, definitely would think about going to, to parties and bars with him. For sure. I mean, I wouldn't have to think twice about that one, man. I mean, the guy, he's probably so nice, he would invite me to, to a bar and pay for it. That's how nice of a, a player that guy is. I'm <laughs> having having a lot of fun here, to be honest. But it goes to show that these kind of games are just really hard to play. They're really hard to win in the first place. Uh, the only thing is, if I manage to effectively dodge him for a long time, he's also obviously not going for my team in terms of spotting or striking them. And I do think that focusing out of the top player in the enemy team is actually counterproductive overall for winning the game. Because the problem is that the one who actually, the one that you think is a, is a top player and uh, killing him will win you the game is also most likely the one in the enemy team that knows best how to dodge. So you're going to take a whole lot of time to focus me out instead of, for example, just going for the gas con or I don't know, maybe a ba battleship in base or maybe focusing out a DD that's uh, alone on the other side, like the Tashkent or the Shimmer. Like, I mean, two torps here again. It's just incredible how annoying carriers can be. In any case, yeah, we focused out the, or 
like we stayed for them or so, we essentially uh, abused the fact that he went behind the island and got himself stuck uh, against him. My submarine was like dived, dove to 30, uh, 30 meters so he couldn't spot him, but that didn't really matter because he has the funny consumable where he can update the minimap position, which is enough for us because no, like we didn't have line of sight anyway. We just needed to know if he stays there or if he potentially moves out. And yeah, we just waited, killed him, secured A therefore, uh, unless the submarine is uh, trying to cap contest and play objective now. But there's nothing really you can do uh, against, like, it, there's no point in sticking around because of a submarine. There's also, it's, it's super unpredictable what he's going to do. So trying to waste time on that is really, really, really counterproductive. Um, there's no real way for me to focus it out, and that's just basically it. Um, I hope that this mo guy doesn't have... Uh, AP loaded. He's engine damaged and flooding and our submarine is going for him. And I'm now purposefully going into their base and killing their carrier because uh, if I try to go back into the middle and help my team out or fight for B, the carrier is going to drop me anyways. Like there is no sign of him not wanting to grieve me for the next 50 years. I might retire from my current job if this keeps on going before he stops griefing me. My AA sadly isn't like, really that good. Uh, that's a wee bit of a problem in this situation. Like many other cruisers would have done better. Specifically also because I'm running Hydro. You should also run Hydro on Marseille because it's pretty push heavy uh, ship. Since all your guns are in the front you have decent armor and the speed. You want to be kind of aggressive most of the times. Some games you have to permakite in this ship. Just the fact, just the nature of the game. Um, for example, in this game, if there would have been actual BBs on my flank blocking me, uh, I couldn't have pushed at all. Uh, the carrier focus together with any sort of ship focusing me too would have definitely meant that I die. Even going into the Zumo was already a big risk. Uh, thankfully, as I said, because of the speed and the dodging capabilities, I could uh, avoid most of his shots. Uh, he got very little damage um, so I could still kind of mitigate the carry at the same time but against more enemy ships focusing me or the right enemy ships focusing me I couldn't have stayed around there and then I would have had to kite again or hide behind a rock alternatively. Um, at least we get our uh, sweet little revenge here and also some damage after all. Uh, he still has full squadrons for unknown reasons that only Wargaming could answer, answer us. I'm gonna eat one more Torp again. Essentially I can't dodge all of the incoming attacks. He's just spamming them over and over into me. Um, do mind that Marseille likes a whole lot of turret reverse. Uh, the battleship is gonna steal the kill. No, no, I get it. Nice, nice. We're going to well done him here because, uh, yeah, we're really, really toxic. Sure. Like, we are really, really, really toxic. Um, I think the toxic one here is unironically the Immelmann. But we got him. We got 45 plane kills without any fighters in a Marseille with 105 uh, KAA damage, which is, to be fair, really hilarious in a Marseille without FA just shows that he really, really, really wanted our cock the entire game. Uh, the enemy submarine went for our carrier, that's why he didn't take back the cap. As I was a bit concerned, he could have just capped A for free the entire time, because we didn't have a DD there. But even if he would have tried that, there's no point for me actually going for that and even attempting to defend anything there, just because the submarines are so unpredictable. Like, you either had to have a destroyer really, really close to that sub, or the carrier noticeably going for the spotting on him. Um, you could ignore that. So, um, we didn't have the optimal spawn. We also didn't have the optimal map. We were definitely aided by the enemy battleships permanently running away and uh, essentially grouping up in one square. We had to, in my opinion, definitely push the A flank. If the enemy gives it up that free and you're that fast of a cruiser uh, or battleship, whatever it is, Theoretically, you, if you're in Vincent there, you should also just straight up push through. Um, you could see that the Marseille 
reload boosters are essentially what makes the ship so fucking great. Someone turning broadside or angling up allows you to punish him heavily with these kind of guns uh, and also the battlecruiser dispersion. And if a destroyer comes too close to you into hard light or you get a destroyer hydroed uh, while running at a smoke, you can pop the reload booster for, for HE salvos that smash pretty hard. Um, quick little glimpse at what we've done. We didn't do really that much damage for Marseille. Marseille actually has a very high damage potential. It's a 160-70k average ship for sure. Um, though it doesn't uh, really do well uh, HE perma kiting. It, it re you really have to make use of uh, nice positioning and getting flat broadsides for chunky H -E uh, AP volleys on battleships or cruisers. We're ending up as first of the team. That's uh, fairly obvious given the nature of the enemy carrier and him just wanting to permagrief us. And we also killed the Marceau completely on our own. Bit aided here that he didn't play survivability expert. It would have been a greater hassle to maybe kill him if he had survivability expert. But in any case, we're going into the spec and then we can talk even more about Marseille. We are running a completely basic cruiser build. There is nothing else you could do on Marseille either. In my opinion, if outnumbered would proc a whole lot on Marseille, it would be disgustingly broken. Sadly, as always, outnumbered doesn't proc in randoms most of the times, especially since Marseille is push focused. In my opinion, it's ev it's gonna proc even less, and your gun range is so high that there's essentially a 90%, 95% chance even that there's too many enemy, uh, too many allies in your firing range still, so it doesn't proc. So you go basic cruiser build. There's really nothing else you could do. Um, in my opinion, PT is too viable, even though the consumable enhancement would give you a pretty great uh, value on Marseille because of the hydro and the speed boost being increased, but Marseille gets a very long duration speed boost, so you if you if you just go out and run the engine boost modification one, you essentially have permanent speed boost throughout the game. You're not even going to finish all of your speed boosts, even if you pop them off, off spawn, you still have the entire game. Um, it's even debatable if not running it is essentially as potent, just because you get the second speed boost at most. Like if if you look at the way games play out, it's mostly at the times where you would need the speed boost. The speed boost is exactly off cooldown on the engine boost modification 1 specs, but you kind of want to pop it immediately, so that's not an option to like drag it out longer into the game until you pop it. And if you don't have it, your speed boost is most likely uh, off reload already, so you can use it again. I don't know, I mean, it's, it's, it's a bit weird, but it's like literally nitpicking. Like there's uh, not a whole lot that changes. Um, you obviously play propulsion, you play main gun. Uh, please don't ever go for secondary battery. It could be pretty meme on Marseille since it actually has improved secondary uh, accuracy and range. Like the secondaries are pretty strong, but please never po put, put that on. Um, consumement is obvious, and you go for uh, main battery reload. The base reload is pretty atrocious. Um, it has to be pretty atrocious because of the reload booster, it's 21, but you have Adrenaline Rush and Reload Booster that work pretty well together. Um, and it has 19 point something base ca uh, range, so yeah, there's not really a point in running more range on it. Um, in any case, uh, as I already said with Marseille, it does best if you really learn and think about the positioning. It's kind of like a Napoli in that sense. Napoli and Marseille can't farm 150, 100, 200k average just by permanently kiting with HE. Um, the ships are also not designed in that way. You're most likely going to end up with more damage if you play around the fact that you have strong AP too, great concealment and decently working armor. I mean, Napoli obviously has great armor. Marseille has better guns, therefore the armor is, is lacking a bit there. Like your sides is 30 millimeter overmatchable, your nose is 25, which is also overmatchable by essentially every battleship, but it's very small. Sides are 30. The main part is that the deck is like 36 or something, so your deck armor isn't completely overmatchable by everything. Um, also, you have very small superstructure, and if your nose in, since it's a very nose in ship, nose in focus chip, um, you uh, shatter a lot of HE on the turrets and the deck itself. Also light cruisers have a pretty hard time killing it just because as I said like lacking superstructure, good deck armor 
and a whole lot of uh, areas covered by turrets so you can tank pretty long nose in uh, against HE Alpha the only problem on Marseille which is like it's it's pretty obvious if you play it a lot that uh, the fires being 60 seconds long could kind of harm you against uh, let's say very effective HE spammers that are kiting away from you you're having a problem there it's like cruisers with 25 millimeter armor or more that kite are a problem because uh, you can't overmatch them but stuff like Smolensk or Colbert isn't even that big of an issue because you're super fast and low arc AP shells uh, overmatch them as well so it's pretty risky for a Colbert to be open watering you at like 11 or 12 kilometers kiting out and if he's further like let's say 14 15 km in a Colbert he's not gonna hit you anyways and the Smolensk isn't even that fast so if you catch that guy because he's smoking up and you can go close you're most likely going to obliterate him do mind though that the French also don't have the fast refusing shells like Stalingrad so you're most likely going to end up getting a lot of overpens on light cruises with these things especially Smolensk can be really really toxic if he just goes flat broadside either because he knows which is like unlikely it's mostly the people are really bad but they're staying flat broadside they only eat overpens it's super hard to sit at all these ships as I said like here we have a flank spawn sadly it's the same map um, we're running into tier 8 9 matchmaking again and we have a lot of cruisers so uh, as said I'm going to stick around with AP I'm trying to figure out how to get an angle on, on, on broadsides with cruisers this guy is over committing deep into the map with his Hindenburg so he's most likely forced to gamer turn out in a second and we have the reload boost ready this is pretty stupid of me to shoot here to be honest but as said like this guy is turning out we have we're running the risk of getting citadel by the Fritz I mean it's a Fritz is very unlikely he's going to turbo smash us but I really want to get this flat broadside shot and we're so fast that we can most oh actually he shot behind us we're so fast that he shot behind us and we can also turn out in time see five overpants first shot was three uh, three overpants some cruisers have really really trolly armor against you uh, you're not having a very easy time there should have probably shot the Neptune since I overmatched his ship sadly my team is collectively camping in base that's the thing or the nature of 1DD games uh, since there is no real spotting and uh, especially battleship apes only play the game if there's a destroyer somewhat in front of them even like most of the destroyers are super bad so like I don't know it doesn't even matter if there's a DD in front of them he's not gonna do shit but they feel more secure <laughs> there's a there's a DD in front of them it's like some psychological uh, insurance that they need to actually play the game we're patient here we're waiting we got a nice little hit it's just two citadels but we're maybe getting a second shot um, gotta be careful though this guy is running it super close towards us so I'm gonna be a bit careful that he's not trying to one for one us we're going to shoot here and then oh, we're going to angle again that's the same thing I mentioned in the Moscow video there's people here you still can't really shoot them reliably just because there is one guy further in your side you're showing him way too much angle that guy wouldn't have pushed so deep I could have definitely played more aggressive but uh, for now I said I'm like alone in the flank um, but I wanted to go deep to maybe get better angles angles that my teammates that are all essentially clumped up behind me are not covering uh, as you can also see I'm keeping AP loaded for now since the Fritz if he shoots is essentially broadside and my AP can smash him pretty hard you can get 15 to even sometimes 20k hits on on battleships for broadside even at ranges like uh, 17 18 km depends essentially only about uh, depend depends on the dispersion because the rest uh, is fine like the penetration is definitely enough especially for upper belts on battleships I'm going to gamer turn in here on the border I have picked up enough speed I know he has low reload he's not gonna really get like it's 11k even though he wasn't completely flat I'm actually gonna pull a reload booster here since this guy is blocking me from completely running it up the flank here and going into the perfect broadsides of his entire team and make it super unplayable for them 
So I'm pop, pop a reload booster here, getting as much AP damage as possible. For some reason he's angling in towards me, showing flat broadside to my entire team. So I hope that at least two or three people are now focusing him out with me. If not, doesn't really matter anyways. I'm gonna pre-heal now, because I think he's still gonna shoot me. Pop my speed boost again. He doesn't have a secondary spec, so I'm not going to suffer that much for doing what I'm doing. Like Even angled I do 9k with AP. Just need to know where to aim. And we all know that German battleships have an insanely toxic superstructure. Actually, my secondaries will most likely be more effective than his. As said, they have improved accuracy and improved range. Like, what is it now? Oh, wait. Secondary range. 9-2. 9-2 without anything being specced on them. I mean, obviously, ca cruisers can only spec into secondaries through a module. I wouldn't even call top grade gunner really like that effective of secondary skill. I mean, it gives you 10% reload on them, or whatever. Doesn't really do much. You know, Napoli, for example, in competitive, you most likely play outnumbered. My secondary's got fire here. 14 hits. As I said, like, they're, they're pretty... Pr pretty baity. Like, they do some stuff. They actually do some things. They, they do damage, they do fires, because they hit more, improved, as I said. But don't get baited into actually specking into them. That is, that would be a complete disaster in my opinion. This guy is now pushing randomly into a crossfire. The shells are super fast. It's just like really nice. Yeah. Nep Neptune just suffers against heavy cruisers like this. I mean, what is he supposed to do? I overmatch him. I have super fast shells. The only thing he can really hope for is decently bad dispersion like in the first volley where I only got two citadels for broadside. Finally I also got a sit on the Hindenburg. What I'm going to do here though because I'm losing a whole lot of HP is I'm going to go dark. I am actually dark because uh, randomly that's just random that this island and this island is covering me at the same time. I can't stay dark. I mean if he turns flat broadside in I'm going to shoot him again. Like I'm I'm not going to get that, le I'm not letting that opportunity go. Hopefully I'm getting like two or three sits here. Only one again. Six overpens again. Um, gotta be careful, like I said, like Smolly, but also like Hindenburg. Probably Clausewitz too, but like Hindenburg and Rhone. They have really trolly citadels for your AP. Just because it's super late fuse. Finally, double sit. He gave me belly, he turned back in again. I mean, I could kind of monitor his gameplay a bit. It kind of showed already that he wasn't the smartest guy and he was also really greedy to get his front turrets on. That's something you can, by the way, or should, by the way, look out for when you play against kite cruisers. Um, you can kind of deduct how well they actually play uh, over time by how hard they swing their rudder and greed for the front turret shots and how much they actually... Uh, angle up just to shoot their guns and if they do it a whole lot it's really likely that there's going to be a situation where you can just wait it out until he turns turns towards you again to get his main guns on target all of them greeds again and then you shoot at the right time and you can punish that especially on ships like Goliath uh, Hindenburg, Zao, those are is, like really the cruisers where when they're in kite and you know they're greedy, they're really greedy and you like kind of see it, uh, you can punish that. You can definitely punish that. By the way, just wanted to quickly mention that this game we're not getting perma focus by a carrier. We're in tier 8 9 matchmaking again, but this time I can finally fully. Can't really love that island here. Actually, maybe I could have. I didn't want to try though, because I said like 20 second base reload and I only have two reload boosters left. If we're still parity on ships, I mean actually there's one, there's one ship down. Oh, this, oh, whew. I didn't have a speed boost, that was really risky. Champagne does have hard hitting guns. So yeah, that was a bit unnecessary. I could have get, gotten punished there really hard, uh, he still didn't really adjust for the the acceleration of Marseille, even though I didn't have speed boost. Um, but yeah, I want to keep the two reload boosters for later on. Um, I mentioned you have to really think about your positions uh, and when to stay dark and when to be spotted. 
in regards to getting into someone's broadside without them knowing. And again, it would make a lot of sense to play a Mars uh, Marseille with a fast destroyer in your division. Uh, or in general like a Smalan again, just to keep enemies spotting off you. If it's a carrier game, it's generally fucked immediately anyways. Uh, but not only do you have to really think about your position to get the most value out of that AP and the reload boost, you also really time, you, you gotta time your reload booster as well. That's very important. Um, you have to have them ready for DDs that are randomly getting spotted. You have to have them ready for uh, for flat broadside cruiser turns and stuff like that. Obviously, you will waste reload boosts at inop inopportune times, and then something random happens. Uh, but it's like a balancing thing. Don't spam them out too hard, but also don't keep them forever because you really want to have all five reload boosts used by the end of the game just so you had the additional damage, you had the additional fires at the right times. Um, this guy is actually AFK. This guy greeted again for the Pommern, angled up a bit too much for me and I could really punish him for this. We're going to reload boost the Bismarck with fires. I mean, since he's AFK, fires tick forever because he's not DCPing. Got one already. He's non fire prevention. We can target specific parts of his ship here. I mean, that's just like quick little tips on how to farm AFKs. Well, uh, you try to get fires immediately on them because they're obviously not extinguishing, uh, DCPing them because they're like AFK. And after you get a whole bunch of fires, you switch to AP if he's broadside and smash him. Uh, otherwise, if he's angled anyways, you keep spamming HE because since he doesn't move, you can par target, <laughs> target specific parts of his ship. Uh, we got a triple fire that is super toxic, but you could also see that the penetration of the ship is just immense. Uh, I can pen so many parts of his ship, German uh, BB deck, easily penable. Oh, please don't tell me there's gonna be some 300k damage game just because I farm out a full HP AFK Bismarck. That would be kind of toxic, not gonna lie. 10k AP. We're essentially just in training rooms, checking out how the gun performance works. <laughs> that is really disgusting, not gonna lie. Yeah, but it can definitely be 300k for free, just because I can now run at a full HP Yamato. The Yamato is going behind the rock, so I can go through and run at him faster. Actually got an arsonist there real quick. Holy fucking shit. Real great game. Makes up for the 140k I just had, because the carrier griefed me. This game I get essentially perfect matchmaking. The only battleship that permanently overmatches me is on the other side, and it's a Yamato that is AFK. Uh, we have six cruisers that all have a citadel, a very large citadel even. Two of the cruisers are even overmatched, the Edinburgh and the Neptune. And the other cruisers are easy to citadel for me, uh, or they at least have a citadel. Um, very hittable one. Kind of dumb what I just said, because Marseille AP hits so hard that it's super easy to citadel essentially every cruiser. Like, you don't even have problems citadeling Con and Annapolis, that's just how good the guns are. I mean, they're straight up. Uh, they're essentially straight up Stalin penetration guns. I think maybe Stalin is a b wee bit better. The only difference is just the improved penetration angle. Stalingrad can punish smaller mistakes. Uh, with Marseille, you have to be better positioned. But then again, you can guess what I'm going to say now. Marseille has the speed and the concealment. Stalingrad doesn't have that. So while you can't really move around in Stalingrad and surprise people, you can do it in Marseille. So yeah. Yeah, well, we're actually going to ha get, hopefully, the Yamato for us. I don't know what the Pommern looks like. Pommern actually is really healthy here. Oh my god, this could be a fucking insane game. Jesus Christ. I'm really hyped. I'm really hyped. I'm, I'm, I'm super healthy still. That's also something. Gum around the corner. I hope he gives me cheek here. Oh, yeah, that's cheek angle. Holy shit. I'm gonna pop my reload boost now. Oh my god, we're already opening up with two citadels. Six pens. At these close ranges, you can smash battleships like Giga Hard. Oh my god, 26k. And he missed even. And he's turning flare broadside. I mean, this looks super paid. This looks super, super paid. In terms of gameplay. Holy shit. Wow. Hey, it's just, uh, just disgusting. Disgusting. Wow, I haven't played Marseille. Like, this is, this is not unscripted shit. 
Like, I mean, I just played the first game and you saw it, and uh, that was my first Marseille game. This is like unscripted shit. Holy fuck. I am... <laughs> I am surprised. Yeah, but then again, like, it was, it was pretty... Pretty paid. I like guess it's, it's also like a very bad example of how to perfectly or like really play the ship in weird situations just because people went flat broadside the entire No, I don't even get. Oh, sadly, I don't get to kill that guy. I think that Salvo would have definitely killed him. Well, it doesn't really get to show how you have to or you could outplay uh, very competent people just because there was an AFK Bismarck and flat broadsiding people the entire game. Um, but yeah, these kind of matchmakings are the perfect. Perfect, perfect ground for Marseille to grieve people in terms of citadels and getting on broadsides, outmaneuvering them, outpositioning them, uh, beating them into a flank, reload boosting broadsides with AP. Uh, that's just the perfect matchmaking. There's only one destroyer, no carrier, so there's very little spotting. And you have spotting parity with a lot of these cruisers given your speed. Because cruisers obviously can't react as fast as destroyers or something. So um, if you're spotted, you can most likely still catch the enemy cruiser trying to turn out or something, even if he has better better concealment. Oh, we have 354k. I think that's even my highest Marseille damage. Um, we're being really lucky here. Heavily paid matchmaking, 3.3 base. Uh, we got the full Bismarck. It's actually, in fact, the full Bismarck. He didn't take damage from anyone else. We smashed the Yamato close up. Um, against battleships like Yamato, Shiki... Um, even like a bit of Ohio Monty, it's a bit harder against them, but battleships that have easy to hit citadels, uh, also like Kreml, you can punish them close up really, really well with your AP and reload booster. Um, other BBs, you still do a lot of damage, but you're most likely not going to citadel French battleships or something, I mean, obviously German battleships you won't sit. Um, but stuff like Conqueror, Thunder, Yamato, you can smash it. Like your cruiser is really able, with reload boost ready, if a battleship fucks it up with angling and you're super close to him, you can smash him completely. Like two, three salvos, the guy is gone. Uh, same for cruisers essentially turning broadside, that's what I said. Um, we didn't even really have to shoot HE in these games, but as said, like even even if the HE DPM is horrendous, you have improved alpha because of the caliber, you have improved pen because of the caliber, and you have the reload boost, which means you can wait for people to DCP and then use it at the right time, which is really, really strong and gives you way more impact on the game even though your HE or like your ship isn't an HE spammer. Well yeah, that's Marseille. <laughs> I'm kinda happy now. Uh, that was a weird moment there. Um, I hope you liked it. Try it out yourself. Um, obviously if you have a hard time with positioning in these kind of cruises that don't have like a 12km radar or something uh, or 10km or radar in general um, because you're like playing solo and you're getting outspotted a lot by DDs because your DDs are running away or dying too fast, then just play it in a division and you're probably going to like this ship a whole lot. Um, it's definitely not broken. It has uh, mediocre armor, as you can see, I said 30 sides. Uh, the deck is 36 as I predicted. You even have a 30 millimeter shell catch step here, step deck. The nose is completely overmatchable, so you even really, you really gotta think about uh, what ships you're going to nose uh, going nose into. You can't bounce Lombards, uh, Bourgons, or Bismarcks, or Tirpitzes close up. If they know where they have to aim, they can punish you through the nose. Um, also, like uh, 406s obviously overmatch that too, so you're definitely not gonna bounce anything there. It doesn't have an icebreaker either. You're going to eat nose sits, um, but. Um, Coming back, it's balanced. It has it has armor weaknesses. It also has a citadel that is hittable. Like you can definitely get sit in that ship. You will get sit in that ship when you turn. Um, it has great guns though, and overall it's a great package. It has 60 seconds fires. That's something that you really have to mind. Though it doesn't have the big superstructure. I mentioned that. Overall great package. Great addition to the game. It's not power creeping uh, any sort of cruiser directly. Like, it doesn't really have a direct competition in that sense. Uh, it's something new. It brings something new to the table in terms of gameplay and timings and uh, also, uh, like, dot damage in terms of reload boost when broadside uh, targets are caught or the HE. Um, yeah, just overall, I'm really happy that this ship exists. Uh, it's a great way to, to design a cruiser. It's the complete opposite of what Yodo is. 
something we already had, something we're going to get in the future in terms of Yodo, like they are going to be torpedo focused cruisers and they are already and it's just dog shit and this cruiser here is just a great example of what what Wargaming could do in terms of uh, new tech trees. In any case, take care, hope you liked it and see you in the next video.